Hi, this is Christine Schmidt, and welcome to the Vision High School Sports Beat. The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships from Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Ford, Kia, and Nissan, with locations in Webster, Henrietta, Greece, Penfield, Fairport, and Canandaigua, online at visionauto.com. Hello everyone, welcome to the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Dan Fates, in for Bill Pucko. Each week at this time, we'll look to take a comprehensive look at Section 5 Sports Monroe County, beginning with our honor roll of high school teams. At number three, Mercy's golf team, the Monarchs managed to tie previously unbeaten Pittsburgh, which is now 7-0-1. Mercy's defending state champ, Christine Schmidt, took medalist honors by a stroke over Courtney Walker. At number two, the Gage Chalet boys soccer team, it was 0-7 before defeating Brockport 2-1. Andrew Hayden got the game-winning goal in the Spartans' first win of the year. And at number one, the Rochester School for the Deaf, whose girls volleyball team beat School of the Arts. Brianna D. Giovanni had 11 kills, and Marlena Robber scored 10 aces. The Wildcats are now 2-1. Which brings us to Brighton, where girls' tennis team matches are an invitational event. Here's Bill Pucko with Civics Lessons. And, uh... For, for uh, our AED is on, a, on this table over here next to the ice. At Brighton, trying out for the girls' tennis team combines sport with a liberal sprinkling of civics, geography, and history. The 2013 varsity team is represented by at least five nations, girls whose parents hail from China, Vietnam, Ukraine, Cambodia, and India. Girls who largely understand and are proud of their roots and heritage. The number one doubles team is Chandrika Sanapala and Shinda Song. They were sectional runners-up last year and played into the second round of the New York State Tournament. Each has sacrificed individual accomplishment to play as a team. It gives you an opportunity to share what you're going through with your doubles partner. And sometimes it's tough mentally on the court, so now that you have someone else that's going through the same thing, you know, you can share your feelings, be like, come on, let's go, we can do this, instead of just talking to yourself as I did in singles. <laughs> sometimes I get down on myself, I'm easily, like, get frustrated with myself, so she's more of there for supporting me, and she's just like, oh, don't worry about it, get it next time, and I'm just there for her support also. You like the doubles better than singles? Yes, I do, because it's less stress and more fun. Each brings something else to the court. Rika is from India. Her parents, Swarupa and Vital Sanapala, were born there. She returns to India each year for a tuna. Well, I'd say in India I learned um, individualism, uh, learning to be who you want to be, and um, helping others around you. If you go to India, you'll always see people helping you, whoever's around you. And I try to do that here to the best of my ability. Unlike her partner, Shinda has never been to her native Cambodia, the birthplace of her father, Sambo San. But she carries it with her. Every day I eat like Cambodian food and I'm around my parents, they talk Cambodian at home. I don't respond back in Cambodian because I think I sound like weird when I talk, but uh, I can understand them really well. Cambodia has a sad and tragic history. In 1975, the country fell under the Pol Pot and Khmer Rouge regime which attempted to form a totally agrarian society. The cities were evacuated and the entire population was forced marched into the country to farm. For several years, there were few places worse on earth in which to live. An estimated two million, or about a quarter of the population, was killed. The Academy Award-winning film, The Killing Fields, immortalized the history. Shinda Sam has heard the stories firsthand. Uh, like my uncle, he's older than my dad and um... He escaped from the refugee camp where they held them as like uh, child labor and stuff like that. And he was like picking rice fields. If he would steal food, he would get like, if he were to get caught, it was a chance that he could like get killed. So. What, when you hear these stories, what goes through your mind? It's just like, I feel how lucky I am today that like I don't have to go through all that like pain and suffering and stuff. 
Few could be happier just playing tennis on an autumn afternoon in Brighton, New York, USA. Coming up, a record run at the McQuaid Invitational, making the grade, and next, Bigfoot. Hi, I'm Georgia Tuttle, and you're watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. Welcome back. Thanks for watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Dan Fates. Time now for Honor Roll of High School Athletes. At number three, twins Laquita and Lakeisha Walker, girls volleyball stars at Wilson, each scored five aces in their win over Marshall. At number two, that Bishop Kearney quarterback Tyler Curtin in a two-point win over Cal Mum. Tyler was 30 for 34, passing for 370 yards and six touchdowns. Through the Kings' first four games, Curtin has passed for 19 touchdowns. And at number one, that girl, Jensine Falumantes of Webster Trader, the first female to score a touchdown in a Section 5 varsity football game. Jensine made history in the fourth quarter of the Warriors' 49-8 win over Wilson. The 5'1 senior scored from three yards out. Which brings us to McQuaid, where we found Bigfoot. This past week, Will Mahar added another highlight to his already decorated high school career. Down by two to Edison with 23 seconds to go, McQuaid Knights were backed up deep in their own end. Mahar had a plan. Well, right after they scored, um, I came up to the sideline, went to Mark, the quarterback, and I said, Mark, let's, let's get a deep pass and, and let's kick a field goal. Um, he's my holder also, so, um, and that's exactly what we did. And whoever said kickers aren't athletes have never met Mahar, as he caught a 41-yard post route and stepped out of bounds with 0.8 seconds on the clock to set up the kick. We were out there in the huddle and, you know, he was kind of keeled over because he'd been playing the whole game, you know, he was double-digit in tackles as a D-back and as a receiver he had over 180 yards catching and stuff like that. And so he gets his drink of water at halftime, so he was a little bit gassed, but he was just keeling over there, getting his thoughts and stuff like that. We just leave him alone and let him do his thing. And from 52 yards out, Mahar did what he does best. You know, I knew I had a leg for that type of a kick. I'd made 60-yard field goals before. Um, so the distance wasn't necessarily a problem, um, but I've never kicked that long of a field goal during a game situation. So it was more the pressure and the accuracy and stuff like that that I was worried about. And that's the life of the kicker. You miss it, you're the GOAT, you, you make it, you're the hero. So what's going through your head right there? You know, I, I'm not thinking about the miss, though. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I, knew, I knew I could make it. I knew I was going to make it, so it was all positive. Mahar is off to a hot start following his 2012 AGR selection. That 52-yard field goal is just a glimpse of what his college coach is excited. Looking to focus solely on kicking at the D1 level, Mahar has been contacted by Notre Dame, USC, and Ohio State, just to name a few. You know, I think that's my best chance, um, especially D1. You know, I maybe could play Division One AA at wide receiver, but um, I think I have my best shot as a scholarship and stuff like that, playing as a kicker. Mahar perfects his skills at elite kicking camps during the offseason. They have camps all over the country and uh, you know, they go to the camps, they rank you. Um, you know, I made a bunch of friends. I mean, you go to camps where there's hundreds of kids there um, all competing against each one another. It's, it's a really cool environment. Um, and then I have a coach in Buffalo that I work with on more one-on-one -on -one level, um, a lot more instructional level. But a great kicker is nothing without a great snapper and holder, and Mahar knows that. It's a pretty cool relationship, actually. Um, you know, we, we work at it. I think we have a really good time with it. Um, we're always out here working together, us three, um, whether it's before the game or even during practice and stuff. I have to know that I have to do my job so then we can all work and win. I mean, I just have to focus on what I have to do. Everyone at McQuaid is enjoying the ride of Will Mahar. What's it like snapping or you know punts and kicks to a you know D1 leg? It's cool. <laughs> now I if he goes there, I say that hey you know I snapped him. When are your turn? Our Saloon and Barnes All Sports High School Game of the Week and Kim Bernson joins us for a Vision Making the Grade honoree. Hi, I'm Elise Manzi. Hi, I'm Raina Mandera. And you are watching Vision's High School Sports Beat.
Welcome back to the Vision Automotive High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. Making the Grade is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, proud to be Rochester's number one selling automotive group. This week, we honor Pittsford Sutherland's Meredith Glenning for making the grade. Meredith is a senior and 4.0 student at Pittsford Sutherland High School. She is captain of the varsity golf team, member of the varsity crew team, and serves as co-editor of her high school yearbook. This past July, Meredith traveled to Jamaica with the First Presbyterian Church of Pittsford, where she helped run a sports camp for disadvantaged youth. There, she worked with local children of a variety of ages, teaching them how to swim, dive, and tread water in a pool. For many of the children, it was their first time in deep water. Meredith also helped provide lunches at camp and took the campers on their very first trip to see a zoo. Nominated by Joan Leroy, Meredith Glenning is making the grade. If you have an idea for our Making the Grade segment, a team or individuals making contributions off the playing field, you can contact us at info at classywolf.com. Here's Dan with our Sports Beat Plays of the Week. Here we are with our football top five plays of the week, presented by Varsity Media. At number five, we go out to Greece, where Olympia takes on Arcadia. Olympia's Zachary Smith is under center. He takes the snap, throws it back to Brian Collister, who then throws it to a wide open Avery Butler with a one-handed catch. He walks into the end zone for a 29-yard hookup. Olympia went on to win 24-17. At number four, we see Rush Henrietta taking on Gates. Snap for Rush Henrietta is Jared Gerbino. He steps up, rolls to his left, throws the bomb down the left sideline and hooks up there with Todd LaRocca for the 49-yard touchdown pass. Rush Henrietta went on to beat Gates 35-21. At number three, we see Victor taking on Eastridge here. Quarterback Mike Wagner in the shotgun, takes the snap, rolls to his right, steps up, and hooks up on a 33-yard bomb on a seam route to Connor Powers. The Blue Devils upset the ranked Eastridge Lancers 38-8. Number two, Aranda Quite in Penfield on a fourth and 35 late in the fourth quarter in a tie game, backup quarterback Thomas Hummel hooks up with Kristen Schaefer all the way down to the five-yard line for the first down. On the next play, Aranda Quite would run it in from five yards out. They go on to win 20 to 14 over the Patriots. Great moment here for Franklin, number one. Justice Imes pitches the ball back to Carl Jones, who throws the ball to Malik Bailey, who goes up and grabs it. He walks into the end zone for a 50 yard touchdown pass, and those are the only points of the season so far for Franklin. When we return, we'll be back with the Sleeton Barnes All Sports High School Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Therese Cannon, and you're watching Visions High School Sports Beat. The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by Salino and Barnes. Car accident? Don't wait. Call 8. 888-8888. Call Salino and Barnes today. Welcome back to the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Dan Fates. This portion of the show is brought to you by Salino and Barnes, your personal injury attorneys. From record participation at the 49th McQuaid Invitational came a record run. We go out to Genesee Valley Park for our Sleeno and Barnes All Sports High School Game of the Week. Here's Bill. For the last 41 of its 49-year run as Rochester's most prestigious cross-country meet, the McQuaid Invitational has taken place at Genesee Valley Park. We, we never really tried to make it uh, bigger, but uh, it, it jumped and jumped and jumped by the time we went out to RIT in 1968, uh, we were at 75 schools, but coming here in 73 to the park really uh, made it because it's a great place for a meet uh, and we, we've revised the course numerous times, but uh, it's just a wonderful place to race and watch races. Bob Bradley has been the one constant, retired since 2006, Bob got the ball rolling in 1965. We ran through the streets of Brighton, starting right at McQuaid, and I uh, put myself in the back seat of the, the Brighton squad car that was leading the race. So I had a great shot of the front of the race. Then I had a, a scamper out quick when I got back to campus so I could be there at the finish line. Times have certainly changed since then. The McQuaid Invitation is as much a cross-country festival as it is a meet. The field grew to a record 7,800 runners from 242 teams from as far away as Cincinnati, good teams. Athletic powerhouses like St. Anthony's of Long Island back after 20 years away. And when you look for a race to attend, what kind of things do you look for? We look for competition 
and uh, what kind of course it is for the time of year that it is. And uh, I had been here over 20 years ago. I was here, so I, I kind of had an idea about the course anyway. But it just fit everything that we wanted right now. 7,800 runners, their families, a small army of volunteers, race officials, and support staff. And they all need to be fed. That job falls to the Rochester West Central Kiwanis Club, which thanks to food donations from Wegmans of 100 cases of beverages, 1,600 hot dogs and rolls, makes this its biggest fundraiser of the year. Funds which are redistributed through the community, largely to children with special needs. Kiwanis is just one of the cottage industries spawned by the McQuaid Invitational. Porta Giants don't come cheap. They're around $100 each per day. We double the Porta Johns. I think we're going to have to triple next year. <laughs> the crowds keep growing. you got to grow with the supply and demand, I guess. Several college cross-country teams use the park on race day as a valuable recruiting tool. Sell me on Fisher. I'm a, I'm a runner. What do you tell me? We're a new program that the school is actually funding very greatly. Uh, they see track and cross country as a main priority. We're getting great funding. There's tons of coaches with lots of experience. And who wants, you can be something new. It's part of something new. We're the first time. So you can come in, set records, and set the face for the program. So come to Fisher. The McQuaid volleyball team was here in force. And in pink, ready as always to lend a hand. Sports community, team building, it kind of works into all that, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I think it's uh, a really nice, in Rochester, it's a really nice community of all the athletes and high school athletes and all that, so to help each other out, I think is really nice. So the Invitational is about more than racing, but the race matters a lot. Among the stars of the girls' seated race was Katie Lembo of Penfield. I knew it would be like, a bunch of people like up there so I knew that I had a chance but at the two mile mark is when the first place girl like caught up to me so then I'm like okay I'm gonna have to try to work with her and see like how the rest of the race plays out. Lembo won this race as a junior this year she wound up third in a stronger field. It's my favorite race of the cross country season just because it really gets me excited when I hear that like 26 other states are going to be running in it. I mean, I love the competition. Katie's performance was eclipsed by another section fiver, Syracuse University bound senior Mickey Burke of Brush Henrietta, who led from early on and headed down the stretch toward the finish line in record time. The excitement and momentum just builds through you and just Everybody roaring your name and just and everybody knowing you too and came out to support you is just great. It's, it's nothing you could ask for. The fastest boys time of the day of all the races. From Rush Henrietta, a senior with a time of 1425.3, Mickey Burke. Burke came in a full 10 seconds under the previous fastest time for the course, breaking a mark that stood 11 years. Record participation, a record setting performance, perfect weather. Next year brings the 50th McQuaid invitation. What do you do for an encore? The rodeo we put on here today, in a sense, will be enough to, to promote other teams, you know, wants. And hopefully, you know, they'll come in. Last year we had a team from Strake Jesuit. You know, this year we brought in St. Anthony's, who hasn't been here in 20 years. But when you look at who's coming, it makes it worth the while. Thanks to our Sports Beat sponsorship partners, Ross Lito and Stephen Barnes, your personal injury lawyers, and the nine dealerships in the Vision Automotive Group, they make the Sports Beat possible. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.